scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. There, there is, I have seen two evils that I believe if not corrected will destroy a lot of people just as an introduction that's not necessarily where I'm dwelling but just to connect with it there there is a growing fear that I've seen especially among ladies not necessarily koinonia ladies um, as I talk with ladies as I talk with women I I'm a bit concerned at the growing fear as it regards family life, most especially the fear of disappointment, the fear of expectations not coming to pass. And then on the other side of the pendulum, I have seen a growing sense of frustration among men, especially young men. Are we together now? So there is on one side fear, the fear that many ladies may never enter into their desired destinies. Fears ranging from the, the projections of late marriage, fear ranging from not finding a man that represents God, God's ideal standard. So there's, there's a lot of fear. It's like the average lady is afraid. Even those who are married are afraid. So it's a very interesting situation. Then on the other hand, you have men who are frustrated. I have seen brothers, some in Koinonia and some around that have been able to see. You know, there's something frustrating when you've done your best and it still doesn't work. You know that state. There are people who are standing and saying, look, I don't know what the key is, but I have to find this thing. It's not working. So I see a lot of frustrated people. People call me, Apostle, do you know my wife just gave birth? And let me confess, things are bad, bad. Nigeria is bad. My life is bad. My boss is bad. And I just cried before God and I thought that it was very important to respond to this. There are so many people who are afraid of getting into relationships, afraid of getting married. So much. And so God will help us in the name of Jesus. Ladies, I want to talk to you first. Pay very close attention. I really want to talk to you from the depth of my heart. If anyone is distracting you this night, just know that that person is really an enemy of your destiny. There is a reality we have to come to terms with. Look at me, please. And I'm very serious. I know there will be a lot of laughing, but just laugh and let your spirit be here. Praise God. The 21st century living, please pay attention, living in the 21st century alone is a challenge all by itself. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Just being alive. I know that we have taught and people have said it that we are the most fortunate generation. I believe that. But at the same time, there has been no time in human history, I tell you, where living has come with circles of challenges 
like our generation just being alive alone is a challenge by default are we together now this is very very important and that means there must be an updated redefinition of concepts listen to me ideas redefinition of paradigms and strategies as regards living as regards family life not necessarily a veering off of God's standard but a redefinition of our approach are you getting what I'm saying now what you call a man in the 21st century is very different from what was understood by a man in 1960s and 70s is that correct yeah so if we do not adjust to these redefinitions of concepts and ideas to be able to stand the times that are coming there will be big disasters in christian homes although born again although tongue talking and many lives we are going to raise all kinds of children who will be hooligans and a nuisance to society i have observed personally now and if there are we, we have a number of children here some very small some maybe in their teenage but i have observed with shock most young people from within the ages of let's say 19 down to 13 that generation has been violently captured by the devil that 19 to 13 i don't know what happened to that generation of young people but there is a disaster they are they are outspoken rebellion against the things of god is beginning to reproduce the pattern of the american church are we together yeah you study children most of them are just finishing from secondary school and maybe universities and all of that they are outspoken rebellion against the life of god the ways of god they are really the technological generation that that teenage and if there is no redefinition of concepts and ideas there will be a very serious challenge the average christian parent does not even know how the concept of parenting because it has changed back in the olden days the parents were the principal instructors of a child but right now the average child has many teachers are we together the school teachers are just one the parents are even the least there are many other things there's facebook to teach there's youtube to teach are we together gone are the days where you can you can off a television and say sit down and read your book you off a television he switches it on on his device think about that the advancement in technology is a double-edged sword it's made certain destinies and created potentials for the destruction of others so i i really would want to talk to us um ladies let me start with you there are certain things sisters i love you and i'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart if you listen to me you will be saved if you are stubborn and you don't listen i guarantee you you would have defined a path that will lead to tears are we together now say amen sisters here do, doesn't mean people who maybe ladies who are not yet married it, just anybody really there are certain things a lady must find in a man otherwise don't marry him write it down i've upgraded my curriculum on this you will you will be interested to hear the things i'm going to tell you now a thorough upgrade just four things i've summarized every cry of every sister to four things whether you know it or not just believe me any brother that does not come along these lines is dangerous sisters what did i say he is shout it i didn't say he's bad i said he's dangerous i don't care whether the brother is joshua selman i don't care whether the brother has a bible on top of his head if these four things are not in place your home will be a disaster and your children will be a disaster ready number one you have no business talking about relationship and marriage with any man who is not god fearing don't be too fast allow me to properly define what i mean by god fearing ne notice i didn't say born again because that thing has been abused in the 21st century 
a born again brother is not one who came out for altar call and you witnessed him raising his hand that's not born again God fearing the primary reason why society is in decadence listen to me is because the men are not God fearing the fear of the Lord is not believing in God there are two different things faith in God and the fear of God are two different things I can have faith in God and not fear God are we together now yeah there are many faith filled Christians who are not God fearing and listen look at this I am a Christian I am a child of God my life is governed by a reference listen the Bible is my reference are we together now my decisions are made with respect to this reference so when you tell me you are a husband what reference are you leading your life and your family with so many people come to church but there is no reference upon which their lives their ideologies and their decisions come from so they just hilariously come up with concepts and ideas about parenting and they have destroyed the lives of innocent women there are many women in the last two weeks the number of married women have had to counsel and the pain that the average married woman woman goes through in their home is unbearable they laugh in the open but they are dying in the secret and the sad thing is that most of the men are born again some are even bishops priests sincere people deacons what does it mean to be god fearing to be god fearing number one means to have reverence respect for god not just to believe in god but to have reverence for god let's hurry up number two to be god fearing means to submit to the ways of god submit to the word of god as the final authority in all matters write this one down to submit to the word of god as the final authority in all matters not some matters you so you don't mix the word of god and culture in our place this is how we do it no in our village this is how it is done this this diversity of concepts has largely destroyed many good men turned them into beasts and animals because there is no centralized scripture based reference upon which their activities are carried out listen let me tell you something there is no man that is bad when they tell you a man is bad when a woman looks at her husband when a young lady looks at someone she's in a relationship with and says you are bad there is, the concept of bad does not exist there is no man who is bad every man is like a video playing out his mindset it is the thinking the ideology of a man that expresses him as bad that is why an umbrella can carry the same body and in two years, the armed robber has become a pastor. The body did not change. Something changed. The same hand that once held a gun and was brutal over people now holds a Bible and is saving sinners. There is nothing called a bad man. I've interacted with some people who are supposedly bad. Some of them old enough to be my parents and I've discovered that intrinsically, every man is good their approach was wrong and so their life became a script playing out some of you are looking at me now brothers as sincere as you are you are about to replay the same script if you don't change you will be shocked to see how you will find out that what you desire let me tell you there is no bad man who married his wife to destroy her are you hearing me nobody I'm a man, I've been a man all my life. I'm not just being a man now. So you have to listen to me. I know exactly men are not bad people. But there are concepts that have turned men into beasts. 
Are we together? A God-fearing person. The word of God. I always give this analogy when I'm counseling people. Listen. If wife come. If watch this. This is my wife. And I want the television to be here. Everybody look up. This is a television now. I want the TV to be here. And my wife says, my husband, this TV has to be there. There is a conflict of ideas. Now, to be God-fearing means both of us must have the unashamedness, or at least I, to say, what does the word of God say about TV? Is the word of God says there should be no TV. What happens to my will? I fold my will to let the will of God prevail. There is no family that will suffer when the man can accept the will of God. The problem is usually the will of the man. And I look at her and say, what part of your dowry didn't I pay? You talk to me, I will slap you. Forget that I'm a man of God. I'm a man, it's just that I'm of God. You talk to me, I will slap you. Are we together? And you know, men, we are very arrogant people. We can be entering hellfire and claim that it's AC. We are, and drag people in trouble until we get in there. And then we say, well, I, I did not exactly understand. The configuration of a man is such that we have a lot to protect. That's why submitting to the ways of God is very hard. That's why in most crusades, women are more. The men don't come. They would rather watch from the television and kneel down and receive the same miracle. But to come and be healed, they feel is an insult. I am a director of A and B and C. But tonight I pray that God will raise men who can submit. I love the song the worship team sang. Look, there is nothing as excellent as a man, especially a young man who has submitted to the will of God in every matter it doesn't matter how it stings my ego once the word of God contradicts my concept I bend I don't look for an explanation no sir it is being God fearing that will make you never to carry your hand and beat your wife you are angry but what did the Bible say about wives it said treat them as unto weaker vessels so when you slap your wife and you are boiling, you are not just a stupid man. You are not submitting to the ways of God. When you love your wife just because she made a nice hair. And say, hey, hey, now you are talking. You are, you are carnal, number one. That is not even true love. Because the Bible says husbands love their wives as Christ loved the church. So the thing is to study how Christ loved the church. He said, while we were yet sinners, undeserving, unqualified, in due season, Christ loved us so when a man has to punish his wife to end his love by dressing well i'm not against good dressing i'm not against looking well i'm not against all of these things but if you force your your wife to have to succumb to those things the day she sees another woman who has those things much more than her she becomes insecure because she knows how unpredictable your love is the fear of the lord Many men do not fear God. Principles of parenting. Do you know that there are families and there are cultures, for instance, that teach that a man can beat his wife at least once or twice so that when he beats her, she will know that this is not a stupid, it's not a sissy. I mean, it's, it's a show of masculinity. I senior you in age, in strength, in whatever it is, in salary. And you joke with me, I beat you once, then I ask you for forgiveness. I'm forgiving you, you are forgiving me, but the memory of what happened will keep you in place. That has worked for a lot of people, but I hate it. Not, I don't care whether it works or not. It's not consistent with the word of God. The word of God is not about what works or not. It's about what God says. If I apply the word of God and it does not work, I will still remain there. Not because of the result it produces, but because that's what came out of the mouth of God. That's what it means to be an ardent follower of the word. Sisters, are you listening? Unfortunately, now, we, we live in a generation where, and please don't, don't find this insulting, many of our sisters, some of you are here looking at me now, you are so gullible. Just anybody just comes wherever. He has small money, small whatever. You are praying in tongues, yet you are not allowing what you are praying to inform the decisions. I am shocked 
when some ladies bring some brothers to me and say i like him i want to say where did you keep your brain i taught you so many things look at the kind of person you are dragging completely antichrist in his approach why do you love him he loves me is he a christian i uh, he's a nice he comes around listen let me tell you something another wife uh, well just for this example you are not permitted to marry another wife listen watch this everyone do you know the only thing you cannot change in your life is god and your wife and children you are supposed to change your cloth after some time you are permitted as lovely as this cloth i'm wearing is after a few months it will fade and i'll throw it away and sew another one so it's amazing how you can love something now and hate it but the bible says you are staying with that woman so there's no you can't change her like a cloth meaning you must find out from god what he must put in you and her to make her remain fresh if you change clothes change phone change car and yet the bible says you cannot change your wife you must find out lord and the woman is growing old so it means you must do something to me that is beyond the physical to keep me faithful i told you tonight my heart is is indicting a good matter we are just warming the plane we must reach that altitude this night in the name of jesus christ yes. god fearing sisters i want you to bond this revelation the first thing to look at in a man is not the car he brought hello say hi hello because some of you if we don't press you like this you know i've discovered in church that many people don't listen as you are talking like this they are looking at you they are even writing but their hearts are already made up no sir i'm saving you trouble you will thank me for it not everything that glitters is gold and don't let anyone pressure you whether parents or friend and say after all what is there he can take care of us what is your idea of care buy you things are we together a god-fearing man a man he doesn't have to be a pastor uh-uh God-fearing has nothing to do with a pastor. God-fearing has nothing to do with praying eight hours. A man can pray eight hours and not be God-fearing. I told you there is a difference between believing God and having a reverence for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Hmm. The fear of God. Submitting to the authority of the word. Submitting to the authority of the word. So you may be Igbo. You may be Hausa, you may be Yoruba, you may be Kaduna State, whatever, Northern and you may be from another nation of the world. It does not matter. The issue of this is how we do it in our place. This is how it is in our place. Our fathers used to, our this used to happen. No, no, no. People do those kinds of nonsense things. Do you know how this refusal to conform to the word of God has brought trouble between people? It's the reason why many marriages are not working parenting so the man has his idea on how to raise children he got it from his friends he got it from bad people are we together now do you know the average young child was not really trained by his parents he just lived with them it's one thing to live with me but it's another thing to be mentored and trained by me that you are going around in my house does not mean i'm training you the bible said train up a child it didn't say live with him many people are living with their children but they are not training their children so their children get the training from their friends bad books bad magazines rubbish films nonsense photos and pictures and by the time that child is 10 or 11 years somebody else is training him how does a train move they are connected the train will not move against where the head of the train is moving so train a child means set the pace don't tell them to do it lead them in doing it you don't ask a child to buy you cigarette and then as he drops he say if i catch you with cigarette i will kill you by myself i've told you smoking is very bad forget that i'm doing it you are not training the child is god speaking to us what i'm saying is a very serious thing 
God fearing. Number two, ladies, the second thing that you must in this order, in this order, it has to be in this order. The second thing is that that man must submit to an earthly authority. I'm giving you redefined 21st century world compliant. He must be able to submit to an earthly authority for mentorship for building for correction there are many families in trouble today because there is no authority figure over the life of the husband there's no man that can call him and say no no what you are doing is wrong he can beat the wife and almost kill her he's the god of himself never marry a man who does not have a pastor a mentor a spiritual authority an elderly person there must be a personality that he has covenanted to listen to the person say amen, amen. very powerful revelation i give you there are many ladies who say ah you're in a relationship i think you should see apostle say, i see apostle for what 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 should i see him for that's how after he slaps you and you say let's go and see apostle you say for what listen no matter how wrong a man and a woman is if there is someone for them to listen you are still safe mm. you are still safe i've had the privilege of talking with a lot of couples i remember one couple they fought in kaduna it was a brutal fight police had to come police for husband and wife and to, and, and they are christians the woman just took she could not take it that day and she decided that look i will try my best whatever i would i will have to attempt this man today true story and two of them after the door settled the police people told them look you are married people don't make a fool out of yourself go and you can you know know how to fix things up two of them agreed that they were going to report themselves to me so they reported themselves and then they came for counseling do you know at the end of that counseling simply because they were people who understood submission at the end of it the man was hugging his wife as if he never slapped her nice people and as far as i know things are working it was a very minor issue and all of that sisters please hear me in the name of jesus the 21st century has changed things some of us this is the dilemma that our fathers came in they had been beating our mothers for many years there are some of us if there was an authority figure the divorce would not have happened there was no one the man decides he's the god of the family the day he decides to descend upon the family with wrath everybody's in trouble sisters the man must be able to show you clearly what authority figure is in his life do you know why let me tell you this emeka come sweetheart come assuming stand here assuming this lady Emeka comes to ask this lady out and says he wants to marry her. Do you know if she tells him and says, okay, whatever it is, this is an authority figure in my life and I would like you to see him. Do you know why the man will run away? Because he doesn't plan to be faithful and he doesn't want anything that will tie him too much. He wants an opportunity to still be doing runs at the side. Hello? Are we together? So he's hoping that by alienating himself, there are many brothers who claim to love you people. They come and drop you for koinonia and go away. And after the grace, they now come and pick you. That's dangerous. Naomi told Ruth, he said, um, um, Ruth told Naomi, he says, my God will be your God. Your people will be my people. Are we together? Because if I know this guy with this lady, tomorrow if I see her smiling at somebody, I have the right to ask a question and say, ah, I hope that guy is your brother. <laughs> that smile is too generous for just an ordinary this thing. So what is the issue? And if there is an issue, I will at least try to find out. It's all right if the issues are irreconcilable, but at least that there is some level. There is disorder in the body of Christ because everybody is doing anything. That's why you can find one brother with 20 girlfriends scattered all around and they never know themselves. Yet yeah, the brother can be leading worship. Yet yeah, the brother can be a pastor in charge of A and B and C. He will tell this one, I'll marry. Just be waiting. You will just, let me just put things in place. While he's doing that, he's already printing um, traditional wedding card. 
How many ladies have been heartbroken? A brother that has told them, he has even met their parents. While they are happy, the next thing they just see a wedding card. This is to notify you that the family of A and B is marrying C and D in, in different places. Very careless. And we make the church look stupid. Let me tell you, there's order in the body of Christ. Many people will hear what I'm saying and think, no. Disorderliness will always empower Satan. Disorderliness of any sort will always empower Satan. The Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. Bless you. Bless you. Number three, very quickly. Are you getting blessed? So sisters, the first thing you should look at in a man, and if you are married and your husband doesn't have this, begin to labor in the place of prayer. Labor generously in the place of prayer. Lord, turn the heart of this man. He must be God-fearing. I've married, the deed has been done. But Lord, you can still step in. You are the God of the second chance. Step in. I will never allow my daughter to marry anybody that is not God-fearing. Bring a jeep, bring a plane, carry hamper for me. That, that, all that one is your cup of tea. If you are not God-fearing, the first question I'll ask you is not what you studied or where you have a job. Are you right with God? And you know that you'll not just tell me, yes, I said, that's all right. Let's go to the next question. No, 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 no. We'll stay there and press it. Right with God means what? Yeah. Right with God means what? You don't just say, I'm right with God. Are, are you a member of what? I'm a member of living faith. Okay, that's all right. No, no. I can, in five minutes through your words, I can know you are just a church goer. You don't fear God. Yeah. Let's restore the fear of God so that our children will be raised. You send children to school. You have finished training your children in the fear of God. They now go and meet a very indisciplined child who came from a family that does not fear God and start making your child who fears God feel like an inferior person. Is that not what happened to some of us growing? You left good Christian families. The day they were talking about pornographic movies, you've never known anything like that. And you say, I don't know anything. They say, are you joking? You are 14 years. You've never watched this. And they make you feel guilty for loving God. And it's that guilt that drives you to say, no, I have to educate my mind. And look at what has happened to your life now. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, through the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Be determined to correct the mistakes of your parents with your life. You have insulted your father. You have insulted your mother. It's now your chance. Oh, apostle, I want to marry this year. Congratulations. But you listen carefully. Do you know some people, if not for this teaching, you are about to make a blunder this Valentine. Because they always come around this time. Wolves in sheep's clothing. They stroll around and they come and look for good church ladies. Well-cultured Christian girls who they can play with their mind because of the innocence of the word. There are many ladies, if it's not a church girl, her eye has opened. When the guy does nonsense, she will jack him and say, we'll die here. I'm not a stupid person. I will show you that although I'm a lady. But a nice, well-cultured church girl has been trained to respect men. Has been trained to behave well. Many bad boys like church girls because they avoid trouble. They, they, the pastor has done the work. So I can easily manipulate them into nonsense. And the guy will use the scripture and say, don't shout at me. Remember what apostle said. He said, it's true. Apostle said we should be nice. They always look for these periods and come and destroy the life of ladies. It pains me when I see very nice ladies and their entire life has been crushed and crumbled by very bad boys because they are sincere. They are innocent. And you know why? We pastors don't teach it because we think it's not necessary. So we allow people to make all their mistakes and destroy their lives and destinies. I get text messages literally every day. One trouble after another in a family. Please, ladies, listen to me very carefully. God-fearing, submission to an earthly authority. I have seen how beautiful many homes have become. Not necessarily because the men are so godly, but the power of submission. 
the Lord has revealed things to me about certain families and I've called the husbands to say, husband, would you want to adjust A and B and C? I think you are doing this to your wife. I think you are doing this to your children. Oh, apostle, I didn't know it was this way. All right. Direction. Number three. Sister, you are praying or considering a man to marry or you are married. That man must have passion for you, not love. Passion. Passion is an adjective that qualifies the extent of love. I love you is not a language that is useful again in this generation because it has been abused. Are you, are you get what I'm saying? One tout can be somewhere holding his symbol and as you are passing, he says, Sister, I love you. So people don't even know what I love you means again. I love you means something carnal and fleshly passion please look at me let me tell you any man who does not have passion for you will be unfaithful write it down write it down and put my name under don't don't post anything and put my name but write it down for your consumption any man with no passion for his wife i give you an ironclad guarantee he will be unfaithful it's not if it's when do you know, let me tell you a shocking truth. Do you know that over 75 to 80% of men, even in Christian families, married men, within the first five years of their marriage have been unfaithful to their wives? Statistically confirmed. I told you it's not because they are bad. Passion. It is passion. Passion is more than physical stature and, and, what, and all of these things. Are we together now? Yeah. So, that's why I hate arranging marriage. I'm saying it again. You know it. I've told you. Arra marriage that from nowhere you are just standing and they come and say, here is the lady. It's okay. You can suggest, you can recommend and people can pray. But where you just ag agree and the day the person is appearing is the day ring is entering your hand. Hey, hey, hey. You are in big, 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 big trouble because the man is only marrying a wife, not a friend. It is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. Any marriage where there is no passion, there must be unfaithfulness. It's not there will be. There must be unfaithfulness. A man cannot struggle indefinitely contemplating his love for his wife. He will find an alternative. And what a generation with many alternatives. His secretary is there. If she's not there, the other one is there. If she's not around, another devil is there somewhere in the hotel. If she's not there, a, a receptionist of another place is somewhere. At every given point, there is somebody waiting to destroy your husband. There are certain women, there are spirits that walk in them, only married men. If they see a young man, no matter what you have, it's not their business. But once they see you, you are married. Ah, what a joy. If you complain about your wife, say, ah, what kind of a woman will oppress such a nice man as this? That's right. He's starting. He's starting. That's exactly what the man wants to hear. I'm very serious with what I'm sharing tonight. Passion. When two people come, you know, to introduce themselves, they just come. You see, sometimes they hold hands. It's as if, hey, hey, hey let's marry you. I said, oh God, just calm down. Because these motions are not passion. Passion is not the, the physical exertion. You are all around the lady. That's not passion. Sometimes it's just jealousy and your personality. It's not passion. Passion is the depth of resolve. It's a resolve within you. That through that lady you have gotten satisfaction and fulfillment. No need for another. The Bible puts it excellently. Many daughters have done well, but thou excellest them. A man who cannot say that to his wife is already a dangerous man. It is true. I know that you may not be the most beautiful lady. Let's tell the truth. I've seen this lady. I know she's beautiful, but you are my wife. You occupy a place that you alone can stay. May God raise men who can speak like that. Not that a beautiful lady passes and even the wife is now afraid because she knows who she married. She just says, honey, must we stand outside? Let's go inside. She, she has already known. The man said, no, no, no. I have to take fresh air. What is all this? Vulnerability. 
See, let me tell you something. Let me tell you a big secret. There are four sets of people if you are marrying, you have to listen to this thing two times. One, if you are marrying a man of God, we are exposed to people every day. People means options. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number two, a high profile businessman. Number three, a politician. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Number four, a lecturer. Anybody in the academia. If you are married to any of these four people, listen with both ears and add your spirit in it because he is exposed as I'm standing here preaching there are all kinds of pretty ladies you are not seeing me but I'm seeing you are we together say amen so when you are not careful, you will be surprised that your husband has four children. You never knew. One day, somebody just knocks your house and says, I must look for my father. You say, what is going on here? Spiritual father? And you see a carbon copy of your child. Look, look, look. Don't think I'm just talking. There are many children scattered around. They belong to your family. It's just that you don't know. The day Jesus will come, Let's just leave him to be the judge. Amen. Please let me have our attention. Very serious issues. Have you not seen families? Some of you come from those families. After 20 years, one day they'll call a meeting and say, honestly, well, there, are, there are so many there are complications around. You don't know who is your real mother. You don't know who is your real father. You really don't know how many you are in your family. You just know what they told you. As you grow, you keep learning more. You thought you were seven. Now you have discovered you are ten. And eventually, the children will say they are coming. When the father now dies, that's when you will know there's trouble. Because the family with the legitimate wife are all girls. And the ones they gave birth to somewhere are boys. The moment the father dies, they now show up and say, no way, our father is our father. And in our culture, women don't inherit anything. Therefore, they displace people. I've counseled cases like that. Are we together? Very important. Passion. Please, my brother, if you find out it is okay, listen, it is very okay to see a lady and just be fond of her. The mystery of attraction is when you find a lady or a person or an object demonstrating many things you perceive to represent value to you. So if beauty represents value, it's impossible to see a pretty girl and pretend it's not being spiritual. Look, look very well. They ask you why I say because I'm a Christian. You are not lying. So looking, it's not all those fake things to pretend you a pretty lady passes there. Yeah, I didn't see any. No, you saw. You saw. It's just that you have self-control. Are we together? Must have passion. You must have passion. Many people don't have passion. The lifespan of their passion is a few weeks after marriage. The lifespan of their passion is when they say, I do. Some, the lifespan of their passion is when she gives them three children and four children. That was his goal to have children. They've been pressuring you. Promise you are getting old. No marriage. Marry. I need three children. Fine. That's the premise of the marriage. So you marry an object that produces children. The moment she produces the children, the goal has been achieved. So there is nothing else. Do you know how many women, brothers and sisters, some of you parents, some of you sadly, you are the ones yourself in that kind of shoes. Do you know how many women move like strangers before their husband? And sometimes they almost wonder and say, you mean this man once asked me out. He once stood in the cold waiting for me to come. Look at how some of our fathers treat our mothers. It's a mess. And they have mentored us to do the same. If God does not intercept, believe me, you will reproduce the same result. Many daughters have done well, but thou excellest them all. There is an appetite for discontentment in the body of Christ. Brothers, let me encourage you. Please be careful. And, and, and sisters too. I've not come to brothers yet. I'm talking about sisters. But it's a quality for brothers. Passion whenever you see that you are attracted to a lady it's not enough reason to go and ask them out that's lack of self-control 
Are we together? It is okay that I look at this lady and I'm attracted to her. It's okay. But self-control. That's what they say in the multitude of many counsel, there is safety. Some, the moment you see a lady and she's fine, day and then, even if it's during a prayer session, in the heat of prayer, say, please, can you see me after, after prayer? Shaka bada 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 bada. Discipline. <laughs> Hallelujah. The next moment, that's your first time. You are even new in the prayer. They have not even confirmed you. You are not a member of the prayer department. You are just arriving that day. You say, sister, honestly, where, where do your parents stay? Let me tell you what you have just revealed about yourself. You are a very indisciplined brother because you come into a place with structure and authority and you just come in and do anything you want to do and sometimes the ladies are foolish enough to play around those kind of things discipline let people come and meet order in your life then they are forced to respect that order are we together now Jesus is helping us today somebody somebody is really getting blessed from what I'm saying it's very important are we together now passion if you are married here you must pray consistently brothers, fathers to keep having passion for your wife not just your children because gone are the days when ladies will respect a man just when he's married and you can see and say ah, Jimmy is married, let's leave him no, no you can see somebody as old as my father and still come and meet me hey, daddy how are you that daddy is, 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 just means I'm available gone are the days you can see a man at my father's age, see a small girl, and say, ah, uh, my daughter, how are you? You, you would think he's fatherly my daughter, but he's, he's, he's not fatherly my daughter at all. It's another dimension on his own. So that you are married. You know, sometimes many men deceive themselves. They just think the moment you are married, it just means people will leave you alone just because you are married. No. Our society, it should be like that. But our society has become so depraved that a ring is just a jewelry. A ring is just a jewelry for entertainment. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's something that symbolizes a covenant relationship is it's entertainment. So when you wear a ring and say, if they see a ring, they'll mind themselves. It's a joke. It's a big joke. Where to? It won't change anything. Thank you, my dear. Love and passion. love and passion and then the last key ladies I will dwell a bit here today never marry a man who is irresponsible that's the last point there must be a demonstration of responsibility 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 many brothers are irresponsible Christian brothers, inclusive, irresponsible, tongue-talking Christian brothers. What does it mean to be responsible? To be responsible means, it means to be aware of the cost dimension of life. Taking cognizance of the cost dimension of life. I don't mean money. That anything to be done must be done by someone. The Bible says every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of all. An irresponsible person says, uh-uh, they have not done it. A responsible person says, can we do it? Are you seeing that now? Let me tell you something. Please look up. There is a tragedy that has happened in Nigeria, especially to Nigerian young men. Please listen. If you can hear what I'm saying, it will save you. Many gentlemen around the world have been victims of this. And some of them seated here looking at me. I want you to listen very carefully. Do you know many young men have been over pampered? And that's why they are irresponsible today. Over pampering does not mean they came from a rich family. A poor family can still over pamper a man. Let me tell you how they over pampered them. A young man is 18 years. The moment he's washing his clothes... You say, ah, uh -uh. is there not house help? Wash for him. Because we have washing machine in our house. 
a young man who is supposed to start learning to be responsible are we together now he goes out and by four o'clock you are ringing his phone return home return home it looks like you are trying to be disciplinary there is an age range where he needs to be home but there is an age range where that guy is submissive maybe he's in church as a choir director and you are now calling a matured boy of 19 years old it's five o'clock where are you come home so the guy is now 25 and he stays home he married with his wife and stays home just like mommy said obedient child nobody goes out to get food again because he has been trained come home in america from 12 years 12 years old in america you see children looking for something to do post office ah there there's no chair for us they always expect to be recipients not contributors it's not your fault that's why i'm helping you tonight many brothers are like that they are born again they love god but anything that discomforts them a little uh -uh, they don't want it it's irresponsibility that produces laziness laziness get up and do something you have a meeting for five o'clock it's raining heavily i say kai oh quarter to five please uh, Benga, I can't make it for the meeting. Guy, I'm tired. This rain, the cold is too much. That's a lazy man who will not feed his family. You see that? He will not feed his family because he will say there's crisis in Nigeria. They can kill people if they go outside and he will leave his family members to die. The Bible says a lazy man will not sow because of the cold and he will also not reap. I am a fanatic of responsibility. Responsibility. You cannot be around me and not be a responsible person. Waiting for things to be done for you. No, sir. You must learn to be an initiator, not just a recipient. There are many men today, the salary comes from their wives. Correct? It's okay if there is a situation that happened in, in the course of the marriage and the woman has to be supporting. You see somebody from 1996, no job. It's the wife that works pays the children's school fees and the man is alive two hands two legs he gets up in the morning sits at the veranda of the house they are playing draft together with other colleagues irresponsible men who come they form a team and they just play where's your wife uh, you know she's a nurse she works in the hospital you know women she will come in the evening the woman will return there is no food she will come and be cooking and the, the male figure in that family is learning he doesn't like it but his ideology is being shaped after the example he's seeing there are too many irresponsible people. There are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the one to raise money for church. Have you seen people like that? There are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the ones to give them money. Am I not your pastor? Buy a car for me. Build a house for me. Marry for me. That's an irresponsible man of God. He's a man of God but an irresponsible one. Responsibility. So you must look at it. Responsibility is not having a car. That's not responsibility. Responsibility is not having a house. That's not responsibility. That's the indices many ladies are using and you are already getting into a big mistake. Responsibility is not having a car and a house. Please listen. I can have a car and a house by the privilege of access. It doesn't mean I'm responsible. So stop using a car and a house to prove that a man is responsible. Eventually it's an index that will show responsibility. But responsibility is from the heart. The willingness to grow, to press. The willingness to fulfill the cost dimension of life. Don't say there are two brothers. One has a car. The other one is working on his foot. And so I, let me just go with what I'm seeing now. The moment the car spoils, that's the last car he will ever buy in his life because he never bought the first one in the first place. Many ladies don't know how to trust God for good brothers. We pray in tongues, but we don't know what to expect. And so I'm painting a picture for you right now. Somebody already after koinonia, you answer the guy. You see how God has given you the answer? The answer is no. The answer is no. Immediately after koinonia, you send him a text. Say, please. Sorry I've delayed you, but the answer is no. Because you are not God-fearing. You don't submit to any authority and you don't want to. He may not know, but is he willing to now that he knows? Are we together now? Yeah. Number three, do you love me passionately? No. 
you passworded your phone passworded your text passworded your laptop passworded a call is coming you just run outside you save the name of a lady john you save the name of the other lady andrew because you turn the head of people to be stupid andrew why are you calling me it's a coded language you are not serious Hallelujah. And finally, the man is not responsible. The average African family has a, has a family to take care of. A nuclear family first. I hope you are aware. Brothers, are you aware? <laughs> Be aware now that the average African family, there is every likelihood your wife is not the last born. What does that mean to you? You are a direct contributor. You are going to contribute. There are families that they gave birth late. Praise God. So, one sister is ready for marriage. The other one is still in primary school. You are going to take care of them. It's not supposed to be so, but it's a reality you are bargained for. That's what saying I love you means. That's what saying I want to marry you means. She tells you I'm the firstborn. Out of how many? Seven. You said you still love her. What you are trying to say is, look, it's all right. We can find a way around it. Brothers, let me say your own quickly. Brothers, I can beg you in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. It's better to have a broken relationship, honorable. In fact, don't break relationships, end them. It's better to have an ended relationship than to have a scattered and pieces marriage. One, you can give me, thank you. What do you look for in a, a lady? God fearing, too. You see that God fearing is the same for both male and female? God fearing. Exact same definitions as with the man. Nothing changing. Gender irrespective. The same God fearing. God fearing meaning you respect God. Many ladies don't respect God. Many ladies don't respect God. They respect themselves, they respect society. They respect every other thing but God. There are ladies who pride themselves in being bad girls, even if they are in church. They are happy when they look and say, you're a bad girl. They, they smile. That we go do. If you're a bad girl, it's a very bad, it's not a good comment. You know, many ladies feel guilty. Listen, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart. Many sisters, innocent church sisters, they feel guilty. Listen, they feel guilty for being innocent. You know, society makes it look like your eye has not opened. You've not been sleeping around. You've never drank in your life. Uh -uh. You don't have a boyfriend. You are 20 years. Uh -uh. You mean this is this? This is how your life is? And they make ladies feel guilty for being innocent. They look and say, she's a small girl. She's just growing old. Come to us. We, we, we have our legs. Are, you, see, you are happy for being bad. It's a different thing if it's your past. Jesus has helped you now. Or at least will help you this night. Are we together? God-fearing. A woman who is not God-fearing will have a husband and her sponsor. That's how she will marry. There is a husband and a sponsor. What is the sponsor for? Rainy days. What's the husband for? Every other thing. So once the going gets tough, she calls. Do you know how many women, married women, still call those who were their ex-husband or ex-boyfriend or ex-sugar uh, son or ex-whatever it is and call the person after many years? A woman with five children still calls one small boy somewhere. How are you reporting her husband to the small boy? And the small boy said, How will we do now? I said, Can we meet in so 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 club at the back of that tree? Just the, the way we used to meet before. You are married. The, the average lady still has affiliations with her past relationships, even in her marital home. I will say it all. My name is Joshua Selman. The average lady still has affiliations. I tell you this. You know I'm not lying. Some of you as you are looking at me, you know it's true. Although you may be married, but you still call John. And it's not just brotherly, how are you? Is the family okay? No, John. I need help. You have to help me. This is my husband. You know he's a stupid man, John. I say, as it is always, you, you know, we know ourselves. I say, no problem, John. Can you do the transfer now?
praise God. That's why they are not faithful. That's why they are not desperate to change their husbands. When they come for prayer meetings like this and they say, if your husband is not doing well, pray. They are not praying. They know the prayer will be answered and they are not interested. So they rather just other people pray. And you see the woman just praying, just looking around. Because whatever happens, there is a, well, you don't say concubine for a man, do you? Somebody somewhere, an affiliate, who they are waiting for. Number two, brothers, what should you look at in a woman? A woman who is submissive to the man at all times. Submissive to the man on the line at all times. I don't have a problem with submission, but when? At all times, convenient or not. Submission has never been a choice. Write it down. That's your own part. Oh, apostle, you don't know how foolish my husband is. Don't worry, I'm coming. I've not finished. For now, just know your own role. Submit. Submission is a difficult thing. Listen, ladies, look at me. Let me tell you a big secret. Submission is a risk. It's a risk. You don't know the man too well, no matter how long you have been going out. Submission is a risk. When you marry, you will discover many other things you never knew. Submission is by faith and it's a risk. It's a risk. You've not seen what the man can do when he has money. You've not seen what the man can do when he doesn't have money. You've not seen what the man can do when his job is under pressure. You've not seen what he's done if he's promoted to become a CEO. Yet the Bible says submit. Submission is a risk. You need the Holy Spirit to do it. That's why you have your own part to make sure that the authority you submit to has been vetted thoroughly by God. Hallelujah. You must submit to the man at all times. When ladies refuse to submit to their husbands and they say he's not man enough, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible did not say submit to man enough men. Apostle is not, he's not providing anything. I'm the one bringing the money. I'm the one paying the school fees. I'm not stupid. I know. Be word compliant. You are, can only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. There are many ladies who want the men. Listen, and sisters, please hear me. Most of us, this mindset came from our mothers and our, our parents generally. We must correct it. The idea that a man must prove he is capable, then I will now submit to him. Hey, you are a hypocrite. You are doing this exactly what his secretary is doing in the office. Who will not submit to a man who gives you food? If I buy you a plate of food, won't you greet me like this the next time? That's what you want your husband to do. There is a difference between your husband and other people. I know you don't like what I'm saying, but it's the Bible. Remember, we agreed that we are going to submit to God in all things. That's the Bible. Submission is hard. I never said it is easy. I never said it is easy. You will be a fool submitting. It's sad, but it's the truth. Because there are times it will not make sense. Your friends will look at you and say, you are stupid. Why are you doing this? Your husband does not deserve you. It's true. But the Bible says. That's why for those of you who are not married and those of you who are not in a relationship, you should thank God. All this rush, I want to enter a relationship. My blood is hot. You will thank God now for this message because the relationship you would have entered will be the beginning of disaster no guidance submit to the man at all times and it starts from the relationship it's not when you get married no it starts from the relationship i know submission is not foolishness but the bible instructs it you see why mentorship is good? You see why I spoke about a spiritual authority? Because if you are playing your role well and the man is not doing his thing, you have a right. That third party that has been authorized can come in and say, no, 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 no. Wife is doing her part well. And because the man submits to authority, he will listen. If his deliverance, they will cast the demon out. If he's counseling, they will manage his pressures at the moment. But where you are submitting to a man who does not submit to God, does not submit to authority, you are in trouble. Big trouble. What is number three? Let's hurry up. What kind of woman should you marry, brother? A woman who is sacrificial and hospitable. 
third point sacrificial and hospitable in the 21st century you marry a woman who cannot sacrifice you have married disaster there are many ladies who like who cannot inconvenience themselves for the growth of their homes no hallelujah the moment the man loses his job the wife changes she can't love him again there are many people I counsel and it's, it's sad the way their wives treat them when things are not going well. Oh, he just bought a house. He just got promotion. My husband, my husband. They just blackmailed him. Oh. They said, ah, this and that happened and they demoted him. She won't refuse but you see the body language. Honey, why now? You know I don't like plantain. Please don't disturb me. In this house, when you bring money, we cook well. Subliminal statements. You have started communicating. It's a terrible thing. Please hear what I'm saying. The Lord is speaking very seriously. Never submit to a man because he has money or because he does not have money. The Bible never does that. The Bible never instructs that. So choose whether you want to marry or not. Thank God marriage is not compulsory. But if you want to do it God's way, you must submit. There is no excuse for rebellion. It's a terrible thing when women gather together with their friends. Now, I know, I know, look, I understand that there are times that women sit down and talk to comfort themselves. But there are women who are perpetually in a habit, in a habit of sitting with groups. They travel to this state, there is a group. And they sit down and lambast their husbands. They talk all kinds of nonsense, reveal family secrets, bedroom secrets that are not for the consumption of the public. And when they finish, they come back and they expect all those women everywhere to respect the men. They will not. Your man, your man had a challenge and maybe he had an affair with a lady. He has apologized. A man of God came in. They managed the situation. It's only you and the pastor who has managed the situation. You now carried your mouth. You have run it from east to west, from UK to London. Everybody knows your husband once had a challenge. And one day they look at him and the day he annoys the person who knows that secret, the person will go and publish something. In 1971, you see them do it in America. When God is about to bless somebody, somebody will just come crying on TV and say, look, I remember what you did to me. These are that. Because we don't keep quiet. The Bible says that even a fool when he's silent is regarded wise. The Bible tells every woman to cover her head there is a dimension of physical covering but there is a dimension of spiritual covering cover your head the head over your life protect him protect him he's vulnerable protect him are you getting blessed sacrificial listen no matter how rich you are no matter how blessed you are a time must come in your relationship and your marriage when you will need sacrifice. Is that true? Sacrifice. There may be times when God can give an instruction. Promise. So that three bedroom flat that you have built and go to a rented apartment. I don't teach irresponsibility but there are times God will give that instruction and for those times it will require sacrifice there are times because you want a good education of your child you will constrain certain things please we cannot go to London on vacation one day we will go but for now we cannot go let us use that money to train our children but there are many women they won't hear other women are going even those who are your genius in office but we we are here no unhealthy comparison hospitality I don't want to talk about that sadly there are ladies who are not hospitable at all you will buy bonds together with a friend you are just with the friend you eat the bonds eat the second one eat the third one squeeze the leather and try and say guy this bond serve is not very sweet you will never give it even to say please take you give them once if they say no you refuse because you never meant to give it stingy attitudes and that kind of thing translates in a home visitors will come to your house and sit down for hours they are discussing critical issues with your husband there are even women men of god who come to their house and they won't do anything when the man is about going ah, ah, when we are warming rice please i stayed in your house for two hours warming with rice even if you are cooking it it will be done by then 
ladies listen 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 please don't laugh it's a serious thing it starts from your attitude in the hostel your port is your own your corner is your own your everything is your own your shoe is your own your water is your own your bible is your own your bed sheet is your own that's how everything will be your own even when you get married you will demarcate it husband this section of the house is for me this one is for you this one is for the children there are many people who cannot give they like taking but they cannot give me ever buy anything for a guy over my dead body he will keep buying for me oh. because to buy 200 naira recharge card he said what will I do he's already rich that's he's the one that asked me out I didn't ask him all that those stupid Nigerian film type wise sayings that many people imbibe and keep using to destroy their lives no sir sacrifice say sacrifice you must learn to sacrifice many ladies feel ashamed being sacrificial they feel cheap being sacrificial we have been indoctrinated by a society that makes women feel cheap when they have to sacrifice so they come to a guy and honestly speaking all this guy has is a small room and all of this but god is helping him and no 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 that attitude of sacrifice is not there i want tomorrow now now i want tomorrow now They say we should do this, this and that. I need 90,000 from you. And the brother says, look, honestly, I don't have anything now. You know it. I, I mean, you can take my ATM. You won't hate him, but your body language. There are many relationships I've counseled. The moment the guy does not have money, he's in trouble. You will see the language of the lady. One month before, he gave her 10,000. As if it's your father. You called your physical father. He said he won't give you anything. You now call somebody you are going out with. And you want to swallow him only 2000 okay i'm grateful you are saying you are grateful but your body language for that remaining one month kai is being shameless it's not good training hallelujah you come into the life of a man you did not contribute anything yet just because he loves you you want to sit down at the throne of his heart and control his atm and control his destiny the only person permitted to occupy that position is jesus are we together yeah. there are many brothers suffering under the hands of ladies and women and wives in many respects who cannot be patient you don't eat tomorrow today are you getting blessed brothers the last thing is now the physical factor are you seeing that is now i even brought the physical factor it must be in that order that's when you can look at every other thing you want to look at she beautiful is she all of these things L listen as i have known god more truly let me tell you this as i have known god more and as i've received mentorship from men and women and elderly people who have worked in this life i found out that all these physical things they are important but sincerely let me tell you the truth from the depth of my heart they will fade like a leaf they will fade and vanish like a leaf i have counseled very beautiful women whose husbands pounded their faces like whatever and drove them out without praying about it if the entire reason why you are attracted to a woman is physical you are in trouble you are in trouble i was in joss when i went to see my parents at, at the beginning of this year i happened to go and visit um one man he used to be my principal and that was the advice he gave me before he knelt down and, 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 and i'll pray for him brothers and sisters let me tell you one truth be careful i'm not saying physical things are not important but when your concentration on physical beauty or attraction or looks or physique or shape or whatever it is supersedes the fear of god are we together now supersedes what's the second one submission to the man supersedes whatever you've heard me say it again you just come and meet a lady there are serious issues maybe in a family of 10 and all of them are non-christians you know what i mean and she's the only christian she's saying sorry oh this is the family you are going to you didn't settle down to pray he said no problem you are too fine for me to let you go you are in trouble my mother is a witch it's okay i love you like that I, me i'm telling you she's a traditional pra i know don't, don't worry there's koinonia there's miracle service 
and people get a lot of casualties sorry man of uh, my brother i need to tell you something i was born with some kind of deficiency honestly i'm physically not able to take in i can't have a child that's a little what is children the most important thing is love for you you will now drive yourself and get married after two years you want to kill her as if she didn't tell you you see it please spiritualize spiritualize your process of getting a wife don't be carnal don't sit with brothers and say, have you looked at this one? I mean, what do you, what can you say? It depends on who you are talking to. If you are talking, if you are talking to a brother who is not born again, you are in trouble. He will give you the counsel of Ahitophel. And after two years, you will be surprised to see that beauty can fade. Say amen. God-fearing, submissive at all times, sacrificial, hospitable let me talk about responsibility for a while and then maybe for a few minutes and then we'll pray write it down first timothy chapter 5 verse 8 please give us first timothy 5 verse 8 quickly brothers i want to talk to you now i want to talk to everybody but specifically to the men we need responsible men in our society first timothy chapter 5 verse 8 is that possible if that's not possible i would look for it Go ahead and read it. It's projected inside, outside. One to read. Uh huh. Hold on. This is a big revelation. Stop there. The Bible says, provide for his own. His own talks of relative and everybody connected. Then it says, but especially, meaning first and foremost, what's your first responsibility? The Bible never said, love your neighbor as yourself. There are people who sit down and their wives are suffering and they are donating cars and buses to churches whereas they cannot pay their children's school fees. It's an irresponsible life. The Bible says, especially to those of his own house. He said he had denied what? The faith. And is worse than an infidel. Write this down. What is responsibility? Responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something. Responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something. Number two, quickly. Responsibility is an awareness of consequences. An awareness of consequences. That if you do this, there is a consequence. If you do not do this, there is a consequence. Responsibility is an awareness of consequence. I identified a few reasons here where people are, why people are generally not responsible. Let me talk about them for a few minutes. Number one, the reason why many people are not responsible and why they may never succeed is their indecision over their success and establishment the reason why many brothers many sisters but brothers especially may never get established is indecision there is a difference between a wish and a decision i want to eat rice that's a wish i want to eat rice but i will get up and go to the restaurant and buy it or i will go to the market to cook it that's a decision backed up by the willingness to pay the price to actualize it there are many brothers wishing wishing through prayer wishing through reading books wishing through receiving prophecy wishing through dropping their prayer points in miracle service no wishing does not pro provide an answer indecision over being successful look at me god is speaking to people here i preached the first message i preached about responsibility in ministry was a message called come out of your father's house that message blessed people in no small way there are many of us who keep lying to ourselves that we are young i'm, I'm young you know i am 20 i am 30 even 40 you say you are young are we together you must learn to take responsibility over your your life if anything will be done you will have to contribute in making it happen indecision 
You've never made a decision to rise up and be serious. You've made a decision to marry. You've made a decision to have children. You've made a decision to fantasize. But you've not made a decision to be diligent. Diligent. And say, no, I'm tired of the way my life is. Lord Jesus, things have to change. Look, let me tell you something. There are brothers listening to me right now and some following online. This night should be your night of decision. Many years ago, I got, I made up my mind that I was going to be a very responsible person. I, it was a vow that I took with God. Are we together? Exactly 14 years ago. In fact, 15 years ago. Exactly 15 years ago. I made that decision. That I was going to be serious and be responsible. The first book I bought was Discovering Your Purpose by Dr. Mike Murdoch, Dr. Miles Munro. And I sat down. When I read that book, I cried. I remember writing it. I still have the book till today. It was a vow that I wrote. I will be a responsible man of God. I will be a, a responsible father. I will be a responsible husband. I will be a responsible leader. Decisions. How do I know you have taken a decision to be successful? When you stop making excuses. Excuses, the language of irresponsible men. I would have done it, but it's not my fault. You too, you understand. No, sir. Stop making excuses. Nigeria is in recession, that's why no. Men who make men who are fond of making excuses are not responsible men. And that includes women too, of course. Number two, admit your mistakes. That's how I know you have decided to succeed. Admit your mistakes. Admit it. Oh, I was careless in this area. I admit. Number three, stop blaming other people for your problems. Many young Nigerians like this. We blame government. We blame all kinds of things. We blame demons. We blame our father. My father didn't train me well. At my age, look at it's now I'm entering 100 level. It's not the best. But now that you have entered, take responsibility. Take responsibility. There are too many people in anger blaming people. They didn't pay my school fees. The reason why I'm sleeping around for school fees is because I have a stupid father. Okay, I agree. I sympathize with you. But now that you are in Christ, is God speaking to us tonight? His teaching is becoming hot. Koinonia is quiet. I pray that it's entering your spirit because that's the goal. Stop making excuses. Brother, stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. You are making the same excuse since you were 15. You are 31 now. Stop making excuses. Your father drove your mother when you were 9 years. Now you are 20. You are 20. 11 years ago. Get over it and move forward. Oh, apostle, I was raped when I was two years. I'm sorry. I feel very bad for you. But the God of heaven has helped. I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I, I know it's very bad and it's disheartening. But get over it and move forward. In fact, we don't even have too much of that in Africa. It's down the west you find irresponsible people. A 70 year old man will come out and say the reason why he was, he was poor was because the father emotionally abused him. And they'll send a counselor 70 years. He, he abused you. When, how old were you? I was five. For 65 years, you allowed your life to move like a car without a driver. And now you are blaming your father going to stand in his graveyard. Dad, I know you're dead. But this and that and that. Trouble. Stories. All this drama and gimmicks. Oh no. Take responsibility. Stand and throw stones at a graveyard and go back 70 years that's a wasted life indecision have you made a decision that you will succeed brothers look at me have you made a decision that your children will not beg for school fees under your authority don't say amen have you made a decision have you made a decision that your wife 
will not be moving around and go and enter one bus and somebody will be pushing her pregnant nine months. Madam Shift, one small boy somewhere is pushing your wife. Have you made a decision to be responsible? Have you made a decision to train your children in the fear of the Lord? Have you made a decision to bring the banner of Jesus in your family? Have you made a decision that you are not going to sit one day and explain and tell your children stories and say that man on TV, we were classmates. Have you made a decision? Many of us have not. We have been wishing, but we have never made a decision. Tonight, make it in Koinonia. Are we together? Make that decision. Make that decision. When you make a decision to be successful, you will stop immediately. You stop being a small child. The concept of small child is not by age. The moment there is nothing that occupies your life to keep you focused. That's why people are free. 10 o'clock, you see them moving around. Drinking sugar cane on the road. Eating carrots on the road. Just moving around. And they say, ah, bros. I don't know. And say, you are free. Are you, are you free? Say, yes. Where are you going? Man, I got one movie. There's one new computer game. That's a man who has not made a decision to be successful. Because when you make that decision, your purpose is supposed to occupy you for a lifetime. You will be too busy. You have to even receive grace from God to think about marriage. Many people are not purpose driven. By 9 o'clock you've slept. You wake up by 6 because you are free. You still sleep back. Wake up by 12. You wake up, you are still free. You still sleep back. You spend from 4 to 5 making calls. Disturbing visionary people. How are you? It's been a while. Say, sorry, I'm walking. Why are you treating me like this? Is it because I don't have money? Let's talk, Jerry. And the person is saying, I'm busy. And you call it pride. May you be too busy for your enemies to distract you. May you be too busy for visionless people to come into your life and come gossiping, talking nonsense. There are many of us, our idleness and our purposelessness has created the exact atmosphere for gossip and everything. Because you are not working. You don't do anything. People will leave their homes and come and crowd in your house. Your, your house is the meeting place. Everybody talks about their marriage. They talk about their children. They talk about everything. You are the recipient. No. Be too busy. Be too busy. Are we together? Somebody wants to come and gossip. As he's coming close to your house, he sees that you are busy. There are so many things happening. Many brothers are too idle. They are too idle. Call them in the night, they are snoring. Call them in the morning, they are snoring. You're not going to make a great life that way. Look, I will tell you the truth because I love you. That's why many of our parents could not pay our school fees. Huh? Could not pay our school fees. There are fathers today. There are many people seated here. It's not your parents that are paying your school fees. And they are alive. And they are doing well. You come and meet them and say, Daddy, I need school fees. They say, are you stupid? What should I do? You say, I don't know what is happening in Nigeria. Automatically, what they are telling you is, are you not a lady? Go and do whatever you know to do to bring the fees. Do you know how I know many parents are irresponsible? Now, let me say this. And I say it with all honor to God for the privilege of being able to help people. Out of all the people I have paid their school fees and paid the school fees, less than 2%, less than 2% of their parents have cared to call to find out who is paying your school fees. There are people who have been paying their school fees for more than four years. There are people who have paid their school fees from secondary school till they graduated. And not once did their parents call to say, come on, who exactly is the man of God that is paying your school fees? Let's at least come and see him and say thank you. Are we together? Yeah. So I know what I'm saying. Very irresponsible people. There are people, some of you, as you are here now, although you are a student, you are still sending money home. Your father is alive. Your mother is alive. It's not that they are old. They cannot work. They will even call you. My daughter, nothing for us this month. And they never ask you how the money is coming. So you don't even... Do you know, I made a statement and um, it is scaring me. The things that women and even men do for money is becoming scary. As I counsel people, I'm being afraid. Honestly, I will tell you this. There are many people, I tell you, 
Their parents are not responsible for their lives. A daughter in a family where they cannot even afford bottled water comes with a phone of 150,000. She's not earning. She's not working. You don't know who is in a relationship with her. No brother has come to show he's responsible. And the father says, "Uh uh-uh, you are enjoying, no? Just leave her own for us. You see that kind of man? Somebody comes to drop your daughter by 11.30 in the night. 11.30, you are the one as the father opens the gate for him. Say, ah, ah, my God, look at this guy. Welcome. She enters with a new dressing that already shows hellfire. And yet, you, you, please see, this thing I'm saying, I'm not being hard on people. I'm challenging something. If you love Jesus Christ and you love your future, you will love what I'm saying. You may not love me, but love what I'm saying. There's too much carelessness. To the extent that there are many parents who don't even know whether their daughters in, are in the home or not. Three days they've not come home. They don't know. If they see them, fine. If they don't see them, fine. It's a different thing. If they are adults, they can live their lives. You can say, this is my daughter, but I did not teach her this. She's taking her decision about life. But you see some of these young ladies that move around? Very small girls. They look at you. Even as a man of God, they don't respect you. Because people older than you are the ones dealing with them. You greet them, they want to treat you like that man who was with them yesterday. A stupid attitude. They see you, you even look at them and you see them doing some funny things. You are trying to correct them and tell them something is wrong. Everybody in their eyes is a boyfriend. They don't know the difference between leaders. They are seeing their parents greeting a man of God and they come out and they are behaving all kinds of things. They think he's another toaster. No respect, no dignity. Are we together? Yeah. This is the carelessness that is happening in society. Do you know, to the point that if you bless a lady and give her 5,000, she will be looking at you and smiling. It's like she's waiting for the other side of the deal. What other side? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because nobody helps for nothing. We live in a society where nobody helps for nothing. If I give you 10,000 naira, you know what to do tomorrow. See, listen, let me encourage you. I don't condemn you, but if there is any man in your life, please listen to me. Listen to me. Who you are exchanging money for going to meet that man, stop it this night. In the name of Jesus, say amen. Amen. Say it. Send them text messages. Whether he's a lecturer or a military officer in judges, send him a text message after Koinonia and say, no weekend again, sir. He said, why? Say, a man of God I love so much has spoken. Oh, I will double what I'm giving you. That's not the issue. Are we together? It's very important. It's very disheartening. Please, if you're a parent here and you are listening to me, I'm not saying you sit down and probe your daughters. Ladies, please don't get it personal. But someone has got to talk to them. It's, it's, too, it's too much. It's too careless. It's too much. A daughter comes with a phone that even her father cannot buy. 250,000 naira phone. A laptop. Whatever it is. And nobody can ask a question. Nobody. Of course you cannot ask because you were never part of her life. You never contributed in making it happen. So is it today now you ask her where did the laptop come from? It's a terrible thing. See, when you see me close to my ladies in Koinonia here, it's for a reason. Many of them literally did not have that father figure in their life. Literally. The moment they are hungry, they know they must sleep with somebody. So for them, they are shocked having somebody that can bless your life. Genuinely. Kai, parents, we need, we have work to do. Many of our parents have really failed us. It's very important. But then we must take responsibility. Please, sisters, you are going to vow in the name of the Lord today. It's better for them to drive you away from school than you should. Do you know how many people you catch HIV today? Do you think the man who gave you the HIV? There are many people who move around, you are seeing. It looks like they are healthy. 
the, 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 aside from the spirit in them, spiritually speaking, curses, yokes, spells on their head, they land everything on your destiny. You are too small for that kind of that kind of thing. There are people who you see them young and small, but the things they have gone through, they can sell you and bring the change. They look at you as if they don't know anything. The Lord will help us. The Lord will seriously help us. Valentine is coming again. An opportunity for destroyers to emerge. From tomorrow, they are selling cakes now, selling balloon, selling letters, selling all kinds of things. They will come roaming around like wolves, about to eat up the destinies of people. They leave their wives and their children. Some of them, their parents, some of the people that some of these men are looking for, the lady they are looking for is even the daughter of the man's friend. Is that true? Yeah. There are ladies that pride themselves in dealing with certain classes of men. We don't do all these small, small boys, no. Us, our own, we deal with Abuja kind. 99 days for the thief. The, the owner is not your husband, the owner is Jesus. The day the owner will come and say, look, I'm fed up with your life. You'll be in trouble. Men will go and catch HIV and come and give their wives. Women will catch HIV and give their husbands and kill themselves. I paid a lady's school fees today by the grace of God and to the glory of God. And it was a disheartening situation. Her registration was closing today. In one of, I don't even know the person in the university today. Her father and her mother both died of HIV and left two of them taking care of themselves i asked the lady how have you been paying your school fees she said i do tailoring i laughed i said i'm not a small child how have you been paying your school fees answer me hey, what is you do tailoring how much is your school fees and how much do you sew clothes and that's when she shocked me and said she has been paying it by doing whatever she does with her pastor <laughs> nothing goes for nothing this is nigeria you can't you can't Eat your cake and have it. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Proverbs 21 verse 20. I want to cast a spirit among men tonight. It's called the spirit of a waster. Write it down. The spirit of a waster. We must cast that spirit out of our brothers. The spirit of waste. Proverbs 21 verse 20. Wasted opportunities. Wasted relationships. i like us to read it. It's projected. One to read. An oil in the dwelling of the wise. Aha. Uh -huh. But a foolish man spended it up. Look at me. You know, when I talk to many brothers, the first thing they tell me is, Apostle, times are hard. There's no money. I want to do business. There is no money. It's a lie. Look at me. God has been faithful to many brothers. If you are a typer at one point or the other in your life, God has been faithful. But many people in the body of Christ are wasters. Wasters of resources, wasters of opportunities, living a lie, living a false life. Your salary is 50,000, but you are staying in a house of 500,000. You are a waster. Are we together? Your salary is 100,000. You are driving a car of 5.5. .5. You are a waster. I told people, don't buy a car until you have money up to 10% of the value of that car consistently for maintenance. Your maintenance cost is approximately 10 to 20% of the overall value of the car you buy on a consistent basis. Many people go and collect loans from the bank. Instead of them to buy a simple car, they buy different kinds of cars, move around to prove a point. You are earning 20,000. You are buying a material of 50,000. 
and you wait and everybody around you does not know let me show you how satan cheats africans there are many of us if you did not have the spirit of a waster god has been faithful in your life you would have raised up to a million naira right now to do responsible things how about marriage how we waste money in africa You get the best venue, hire the best people. You go and get a small boy and pay for that boy 30,000 naira to hold a ring. Can't you put it in your pocket? <laughs> of course, why are you laughing? Will he stop it from entering her hand? The spirit of a waster is destroying Nigerians. You are a student, you are wearing a suit of 50,000 and you pride yourself all around. I have this. No, sir. It's a waste. And we pastors have been victims of this because in an attempt to help people become successful, we put pressure on them to prove that the world is working. And in an attempt to show that the world is working, the money that God gave the guy to help him, he now uses it to buy a car as a hundred level student to show that he has faith. Faith is not foolishness. You are in 200 level, you are wearing a, 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 a weaver of, of 20,000. No. There are many students who are eating where certain lecturers are eating. Where a piece of meat, a big piece of meat is 500 naira. See that? And you eat three square meals a day. They give you 10,000 naira in a week you spent. Some of us have a spirit of spending. You can't rest till it finishes. It's a spirit. Waster. Are we together? You are wearing a shoe of this amount. Please, I'm talking to you. You have to square up. There are things in your life you can go and sell. That's your capital. Sell all those nonsense. You have three phones. Who are you calling? You are loading your phone with 10,000 naira in a month. That's somebody's salary. And you, all you are doing is gisting. Rooms that we give the devil to destroy our lives. Praise the Lord. You are not doing anything. Your barber comes to meet you. 1,000 naira per baby. Can't you go and kill? What are you rushing for? Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are people who don't have any money. You are not earning anything. You charter a car to wherever you want to go to. Let me show you how we waste money. 25,000 naira on a trip. Oh, I can't enter night bus. We have to fly. 30,000 naira. Economy is finished. Book business class. 45,000 naira. You are paying, you are flying away your destiny. Whereas with 5,000 naira, you can with honor. I'm not saying the days will not come for those things. But not now. Fake life. You see people living. Especially women of God. Fake life. So that I will show that I'm anointed. You go and buy a watch of 100,000. You are wearing it. No, let me tell you. When you rise, everything around you rises. So when you fake it, nothing around you can resonate with the level you claim to have been. You don't know anybody that warrants that level of influence. When Koinonia started here, with crowds of people packed to outside, I will come on a bike. A bike. Miracle service. People are waiting. The next thing you hear sound of a bike, I will drop from it honorably with my Bible. And at that time, I was already blessed. Please, stop any fake life. We know you are responsible and we know God will help you. Brothers, am I speaking to you? This pressure of trying to look like Joshua Selman, you will die, oh, you don't know the fire I've passed through to come where I am. No, no, sir. This pressure of trying to do this. Visitors, if I am coming to your house, if all you have is water, keep it there. Don't go and borrow money to cook Turkey, I didn't ask you. God is faithful. I'm not coming for food. There are families and women of God, may God forgive us honestly. Because when anytime they visit any family, they must prepare honorarium. Thank God no leader is doing that here. The day I hear that any leader in this place is going to anybody's house and saying they should package honorarium. Oh no, 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 no. The God that sent me will judge that leader. Judge that leader that you go to anybody's house under the canopy of Koinonia and go and say they should give you. No, not every seed self is collectible. 
Some things are your birthright. You are collecting your honor and your dignity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is God helping us tonight? The spirit of waste. You start saving. You get 50,000 naira every day from your parents. That's a worker's salary. Yet, before half of the month, you are begging people who are on their own. Your makeup kit is 20,000. Who cares? If you have the money, that's all right. There are some of us now, you are planning marriage. You've not gone anywhere. You've spent 2.5. What are you doing with it? Wedding gown, 500,000. To wear once. Are you wearing it every day? Suit, 100,000. There is a particular anko that this group, where is it in the Bible? If you don't have money, everybody should dress well. Just honor them. Will they deny that they are your parents? Must they dress in anko? Please hear what I'm saying. You know. If eat your size and grow gradually, God will honor you. Honeymoon, you want to travel out to where? If you don't have the money, explain to your wife. Honeymoon is a mentality, not, a, not an act. Africans waste money. I was sharing with some people today. 12 years celebration of getting born again. 13 years of getting filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Two years of being delivered from smoking. And we organize a big ceremony. We fly people from everywhere. December, the entire savings of Nigerians for January to November finishes in three days. Three days of hilarious living. You buy hamper 14,000 per one. You buy almost 20 to share because you are looking for a good name in church. No, sir. There are brothers here. You have no business buying a laptop. You don't have the money. There are sisters. You have no business buying certain materials. If all you have is one trouser, my brother, iron it with dignity. The God of heaven who sees you will honor you. You are not irresponsible. If you meet the sister and she doesn't like you because of the trouser, God just saved you from a bad wife. Go away and trust God for a lady who knows how to see in the spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't put pressure on yourself. You enter any relationship that is a high maintenance relationship, killing you, book for counseling. Book for counseling fast and say, Apostle, I need help. I entered it. I'm not saying you are bad people. That's what counseling is for. To be able to talk to you and say, No, 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 I think you are spending too much. People get married and they don't have a house. They get married, they spend 2.5 million and they cannot afford 150,000 for a house because of the life of a waste. May the Lord deliver us from the spirit of waste. What of ministries that waste? Uncommanded projects. Projects that are not commanded by God. Oh, this other man of God is doing it. Let's do it too. A church comes and they don't have money. Simply because they are seeing people pay school fees. They now start paying people school fees. And the entire reserve of the ministry disappears. Oh, they are buying a pulpit. Oh, they are buying this. This is five million. We must also buy it. Uncommanded project. Anywhere God has not taken me to, I'm not under pressure. I will get there for sure. Whether you believe it or not, I will get there. There are levels Koinonia has reached now by the grace of God. And there are levels we have not reached. I will never put myself under pressure to get into those levels. Brother, your hand does not reach to buy a car. Be patient. Just take it easy. The God of heaven will give you. When favor comes upon your life, it will be like rain. In 24 hours, God will change your life. But by the time you force the door, it will open, but it will kill you. We are going to pray. Has anyone learned something tonight? God wants us to rise to be great men and women. First in our family lives, but also in every other thing. Every lady here trusting God for a good man. May the God that I serve bring a good man to your life. And any brother trusting God for a good woman, may God bring a good person. But you cannot reap a seed you are not sowing. You cannot sow the seed of a stupid man and reap a virtuous woman. You cannot reap, sow a seed of a wicked woman and reap an award-winning man. God is not that unjust. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. 
whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. So ladies, please listen to me. As I round up, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be careful with some of this carnality and materialism. Be careful. I've challenged the brothers to be serious, but you must be careful. There is no body, no tree, no matter how well you water and fertilize it, it will not become a giant oak tree in one day. But there's potentials for it. Are you together now? Yeah. There are people some of you admire. If you saw them 10, 20 years ago, you will not like them. But faith. I saw one man of God. When I saw his picture, it was as if he was with rope he used to tie his waist. You can use measuring tape and tie the waist. His wedding with his wife, she just stood as if they carried that cap, as if they carried cap somewhere and just put on her head. And the guy, the guy should be a multi-millionaire, if not a billionaire today. He lavishes upon his wife like there's no tomorrow. That's the price of taking the risk with the man. If you are risk averse, you sit down there. Is God helping us? And brothers, be responsible. Don't take for granted that I've told ladies to be responsible to be responsible and you sit down you are stingy you are greedy you are in a relationship valentine is coming you are pretending like you don't know plan you must do something on tuesday plan plan you have today saturday sunday monday tuesday morning plan so that you don't take for granted and say because some of those things are laziness please we must balance it brothers you must be serious Sisters, you must be serious. Make up your mind that you are going to make a good decision. Dissociate from any dangerous and poisonous relationship. Brother, you are in a relationship that is, is killing you, is eating you up spiritually and financially. I may not advise you to break, but I advise you to cry for help. Cry for help. Don't die in silence. Sister, you are in a relationship with a brother who is oppressing you and making nonsense out of your life because I said you should be virtuous. Cry for help. And if it's not changing, leave him. Leave him. It is scriptural to leave a relationship that does not represent where you are going. Are we together? We are going to pray. We will continue tomorrow during the workers retreat. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray, but I want, please no moving around. No moving around. I want everyone to stand just, just stand still for a moment. And I want you to think about your life in one minute. Especially for the brothers. I want you to meditate upon your life in one minute. What will your 10 years be from now? What will your 20 years be? At the rate you are going with your life. At the rate of your mindset. At the rate at which your understanding is. What kind of results are you producing? Sister, look at your life now and be sincere between you and the God of heaven. The seeds you are sowing now, what kind of harvest do you see in front of you? Now, I want you to lift your voice before the God of heaven. In the next two or three minutes, cry. He says, my help comes from the Lord. Cry, 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 cry. Please, I want you to cry to God. I've said many things tonight and you know where it affects you. I want you to cry before God in one minute. Lord, I have seen a mindset. I've seen a mindset that is destructive. I need you to help me. I'm a godly brother, but I've seen that I've been irresponsible. I have been lazy. Lazy about my relationship. Lazy about my life. I've been giving flimsy excuses. I take responsibility tonight. Are you praying? lady and have allowed a wrong mindset a materialistic mindset a mindset that is carnal to consume me I ask you for help lift your voice and pray if every other thing I said tonight touched you anywhere please lift your voice and cry to the God of God Responsible as a father, pray. You are connecting with us online. Pray. I'm not be responsible as a husband to my wife. 
for my children. I take responsibility to fight. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Father, take away every spirit of indiscipline, laziness, and wastage, and irresponsibility. Let it live my life forever. Lift your voice and pray. Laziness. Mental laziness. Entitlement mentality. Waiting for father to do this for me. Waiting for mother to do this for me. Flimsy excuses. Are you praying? Please pray. This is your destiny. Pray. This is your destiny. Pray. This is your destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, break any relationship in my life. Love relationship, wrong associations that are contributing to my downfall in life. Let them be scattered now. I don't care how long. Any wrong friend, wrong associate, wrong whatever it is. I break it now. Friends that give me wrong counsel. I destroy it now. Shaka parata kata. Shaka ta breka teli ba shiba gamanaraba. I was not a thief until I joined certain people. And they made me to be a thief now. I was not a bad girl until I joined certain cabals. From those relationships, <laughs> hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Prayer point number three Father, give me direction first over marriage and over every area of my life. I, I confess that I'm confused. Give me direction. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and cry out. Lord, I need direction. Concerning the issue of marriage, I need direction. If you are married, pray. Lord, concerning my family, right now I don't even know what to do. Things are not working in my family. You've got to help me, oh God. Direction on what to do as a father financial direction on what stream of income to put your hands on don't just do anything because everybody is doing anything direction on how to go as a pastor direction on my marriage direction on a life partner direction Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point before the last one. You're going to say, Lord, walk in me and walk on me. Anything that makes me not to be the ideal wife, anything, don't pray for husband yet. Lord, whatever makes me a bad wife, whatever makes me a bad husband, whatever makes ladies run away from me, whatever makes men run away from me, I humble myself tonight and I ask that you take it from me. Walk on me. Walk on me. Lift your voice and pray. What is driving my husband away from me? What is driving my wife away from me? Is there something I'm doing wrong? What is driving my destiny helper away from me? 
what is driving the anointing away from me what is driving favor away from me what is driving breakthrough pray from your heart there must be something I'm doing wrong why does my husband not love me I may be getting it wrong somewhere why does my wife not love me I must be getting it wrong somewhere why is our relationship up today and down tomorrow something must be wrong I take responsibility no passing blames hallelujah last prayer point and we are done for this night listen carefully we are going to pray this prayer point before I make the altar call there is a dimension I didn't have time to talk about maybe tomorrow if God grants us time during the workers retreat I will explain it's called the suffering help of God listen, listen ah, yeah. brothers and sisters God can help a man I am a testimony of a man that God has helped. The Bible says, and Uzziah was marvelously helped of the Lord. A young man, to, for a young man to be established in Nigeria is hard. I, I admit it, it's hard. There are no jobs. Every society gets its employment from the private sector. And if the private sector is not robust in any economy, there is no job. I know the probability of an average young man to be established before 30 in Nigeria now I tell you the line is very slim if he's to follow everything justly by God when will you write jam and finish strikes in school before you finish and all the trouble that comes with sentiments and tradition you need help brothers it's neither by strength not by power. When I found out that my strength was too small to give me the result, I played my role and ran to God. I, I want to give you the next two minutes. I don't know how you will pray this prayer, but you are going to say, Lord, if you don't help me, I will move forward. Oh, I, I am tired. Please cry, 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 cry. God can help men. Oh, he has been our Ebenezer as a ministry. We are a testimony of men that God has helped. My life today is a testimony of how, a, of how God can help a man. Cry for his help. Cry for his help. Don't pretend you don't need it. Don't pretend you don't need it. In his help there is favor. In his help there is protection. In his help there is honor. In his help there is restoration. In his help there is speed. There is advancement. Help me, oh God. Help me over the issue of marriage. Help me over the issue of business. Help me over the issue of my children. Help me over the issue of my family. Help me over the issue of my character. Help me over the issue of everything my career I admit that I need your help for he is our ever present help ever present help ever present help hallelujah hallelujah listen if you forget anything I've shared tonight, don't forget that God can help men. You will be foolish to imagine he cannot help. My God, the God I serve, look at my life. That God cannot help a ministry, look around and bring one coin poster that you've seen on the road. That God cannot help a people, look at the financial records of the millions of naira spent by this ministry. Debt free completely not owing any man as a ministry dead or alive. Listen, brothers and sisters, God can help a man. I tell you, he can deliver you. He can protect you. 
Some of us have been trying on our strength. We are going to pray that prayer one more time and say, Lord, I give up my strength. I lay down my pride. Please help me. Help me to be established. I'm getting older and older and at the rate of the way things are going, my job cannot establish me. My salary cannot establish me. My business cannot establish me. I need help from heaven. Hallelujah. Keep standing everyone, inside, outside. And all the people following us online. Whatever nation you are in, it doesn't matter. Distance is no barrier. Please listen. I want to make a very serious altar call now. Two in one. First and foremost, those who are saying, man of God, I've been waiting for this call. Because I'm about to run to Jesus right now. I don't like the way my life is going. I need Jesus. You don't need counseling for some people. You need Jesus. There's no level of counseling that will, re that will replace lack of the life of God. Don't sit down. This is not an initiation to be a Christian. This is a serious affair with your destiny. Are we together now? The second group of people are those that are saying, Lord, I'm coming before you to truly repent. I'm asking you to help me. I'm asking you to help me with all my heart. You may not be sleeping around. You may not be drinking. You may not be smoking. But you know your life is as scattered as whatever. And you know that you have not been walking in the ways of God. You are saying, Lord, my pride is what has brought me to this trouble. I need your help fast. These two categories of people. Please, if you are outside, start running just before we come. I'm going to count one to five. It's not by force. There is nothing tonight that is by force. But I tell you, you need Jesus. You need Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Start coming. For the world today. Run like there's fire on the mountain. There's no other. Jesus is the way. coming i want you to run from any of the overflows join them those following us online there is still hope for you listen let me tell you the truth i don't care what has happened in your life the lord jesus will give you a new beginning it doesn't matter but you will only give those who can receive he said as many as received him you can reject him hallelujah those of you in front lift your right hand to heaven you are not reciting a poem this is not a memory verse. This is not a recitation. This is a simple guide to help you make a powerful decision. Say after me from the depth of your heart. And if you didn't come out here and you are part of them, those online, say it where you are. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you to help me tonight. I have come before you sincerely asking you to intervene in my life I receive your life into my spirit and I declare that from today my sins are forgiven I have the life of God I move forward ever and backward never the power of Satan the power of sin and the flesh is broken over my life in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted Lord Jesus there is no man who can be perfect by himself outside of you you are our righteousness our holiness and our perfection I pray for these ones who have come in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven by the blood of Jesus 
and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that a new life starts for you today. The grace to be responsible and to rise like an edifice is released upon you. In the name of Jesus, may your path be like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. In the name of Jesus Christ, every guilt, every condemnation over your life, I declare that it leaves your life now and forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you for this great decision. Please follow, who is there? Follow someone waving his or her hands. Okay. Okay, lady, she's waving her hands. All of you this way, just follow them. Please provide your details as required. And the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.